happy Friday. I hope you guys are having a great start to your weekend, which is amazing that it's starting now. I wanted to just hop on here and connect with you guys about budgets and finances. I feel like that was a really hot topic and you guys seem to want to know a lot more about budgets and finances. So I'm just going to give you guys a little bit of insight about what that looks like for us as a family and just how it's changed um, since I launched my business and really what it's looked like for us. So settle in and enjoy this awesome episode. Okay, uh, first of all, we... Let me dig back to even when we were first married. <laughs> when we were first married, I think I shared on my Instagram feed that I might have had a little bit of a shopping addiction. And that's okay, right? There's so much freedom in admitting what you were and now what you're not anymore. And I don't feel like shame or guilt or anything with sharing that, listen, I shop too much and I was buying things that our family didn't need, that our budget didn't need, that my life didn't need. And I'm not sure what I was trying to, what feeling and emotion I was trying to just cover up with stuff, but I was a crazy shopping lady. So we had a two bedroom condo in St. Thomas and the entire second bedroom was filled with my clothes and shoes and accessories. It was ridiculous. It was like extreme shopping gone wrong. I probably could have been on like a TLC episode or something. <laughs> I mean, it really wasn't that bad, but it was, it was bad enough to where when I look back, I'm like, that was a little bit absurd. Okay. So what did I learn from there and what changed my mindset and why am I no longer like that? So one of the things that we did is we did Dave Ramsey's course. It's called Financial Peace University. And that course, you guys, revolutionized the way that we looked at each other and how we managed money, the way we as a couple managed money, the way we both looked at money just in general and the emotional feelings that we had from money and all of that. So that course to us was this pivotal point. Um, but what we had done pre to taking the Financial Peace University course is we had paid off all of our debts except our mortgage. And I was pregnant with our first, Nash, and when we did the FPU course. So previous to that, we had taken about two years to pay off student loans and credit card debt. And it was hard, you guys. And I'm talking like total on maybe, I don't even know how much combined we would have made in those years. Maybe like 125, 150. And all we had to pay off was like... I don't think it was even 35,000 and it took us like three years of just every bit of money we got we threw towards it and it was hard and we friends would go on vacations and we wouldn't be able to go and friends would go out to eat and we wouldn't be able to go and it was just honestly a time where we just focused and said like if we can get through this debt and totally power through these finances and just put our our dreams and wishes and travel and all that on hold for two or three years, think about how much better we'll be on the other end of things. So we did that before we um, were pregnant with Nash. So I just wanna make sure that I paint that picture. And then when we were pregnant with Nash is when we took the Financial Peace University course. We actually facilitated it at our church when we lived in Austin. So we kind of led it at our house along with, um, enjoying it as as we led it so we had never done it before we had only followed his total money makeover book and i listened to his program all the time so i love the dave ramsey's program and to me he just gives very easy tips he has the seven baby steps and just take time i can put um a link in here and you can look up on pinterest like dave ramsey's seven baby steps and there's just so much information out there so it's just seven baby steps that you do in order, and um, I think the first one is to have a $1,000 emergency fund. And I remember at first, I was like, $1,000, that is so 
much money. But now I think that we have a 12 month, well, we have a buffer anywhere, depending on what we're investing in, anywhere from six months to 12 months um, emergency fund fully funded. So that's amazing. That means that we could live with nobody having any type of income for six to 12 months. So it amazes me to think back, gosh, what is that? So Nash is six. So like seven years ago, and we were fully debt free except our mortgage in Austin. And we had probably only three or $4,000 to our name in addition to just retirement accounts. So what I'm saying is debt freedom is real. It does put your life on hold. It's really hard because you have so many wants and you have to decide, is it a need or a want? So I'll talk about that a little bit later. So how did I, what, what type of mindset shift happened when we did FPU? We actually realized that I'm more of the saver. Like I find comfort in us, um, having security and lined up and our ducks in a row. And we found out that Walt is more of a spender. And if he wants to buy something, he wants to be able to buy it. So that was really interesting. So we were on each side of the spectrum and now we um, have gravitated in a little bit more. Like I'm more open to the idea of spending on frivolous things and just things that I would have been more, uh, just like, no, 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 we can't spend on that. And then he's more in line with we need to save and more thinking future forward and that sort of thing. So that was really helpful to um, figure out what type of spenders and savers we are and what was the emotional pull and drive behind the characteristics revolve, revolving around that. So what do we do now? So now um, we mainly live off of, well, my, our main source of income is Jamberry and, you know, Walt is now a stay at home dad. So I get five paychecks a month for being my month. I mean, my weekly commission off of my own personal sales. And my fifth is my bonus. And that is, um, just congruent with whatever my organization and my team and everything does. So that is the biggest chunk of obviously our income. So what we do when that comes in on the 10th of every month is we immediately put 25 to 30% of that immediately aside. I then give multiple cash bonuses to my leaders, which has been so fun and so wonderful. They, depending on what promotion or rank they make every month, they get to put their name into a hat and I draw a random winner and it is incredible. And those bonuses have averaged anywhere from $150 to $400. So it's just really awesome to think that we are able to generate that kind of income for other people and just do it because we're proud of them and because they work hard when they work hard like everything works like our team is the best so that's what the 25 and 30 and then the cash bonuses and then we always try to aim for 10 percent for giving and this is through charities through our church um through anonymous giving so i feel like we love to 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 have that just be like a fluid form of contribution and that has just been really incredible like when I think some people say to me well, what do you what do you it, when you think big and large life and finances and going forward what does that look like to you and when I think about like the future you know right now we 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 don't live on 90% because we save a lot and we give a lot but I love that right now we're like 90 10 right we always like give to charity 10 I think it's so incredible to think that somebody and a lot of people do they live on 10 and they give away 90 like that's incredible I've heard some awesome awesome talks of entrepreneurs who you know let's say they make 10 million a year well they live on a million a year and they give away nine and to me I'm like yes how freaking cool is that so I don't know you guys maybe in 10 years that's what our story will be that is what I want to give out to the world so I just don't know so 
we don't live very fancy. I mean, I feel like people, um, a lot, everyone on my team is privy to my paychecks. And if they are ever like, okay, can you share with me what you're making? It's not a secret to me because I never know when my story with my business can really incentivize like a young leader to work harder and build their team bigger and just rocket in their business, right? So I'm always an open book and I have a lot of people that say to me on bonus day, what was your bonus? And I share with them. And why I do that is because I always want them to know like what is possible in this business. And I also just like, it can be hard though, because you know, then people come to our house for team meetings and we live so beyond, below our means, like below, below, below. I mean, we still have a kitchen. I think you guys saw, remember in the smoothie episode, we still have a kitchen that has like tile countertops. I mean, it's the original cabinetry of my grandparents. You know, my grandparents built this house in 1951 and I am okay with that because you know what our goal is right now? Our financial goal right now is to pay off this mortgage. Like just like we did with our debts, I just can't even imagine the freedom we'll feel in less than two years, I think, maybe like a year and a half uh, of not having a mortgage. I mean, I just was saying to Walt the other day when we were on a date, we, you, like we will be mortgage free by like 40 and he won't even be 55. That's incredible. No mortgage. Like, wow. So that's our like stealth goal right now. You know, we're saving for retirement, but right now we are 100% like doubling, tripling, and quadrupling our mortgage payments, depending on what my bonus looks like. Like that's where we're funneling a lot of our money right now, because to us, there's just so much. And I know you, you guys don't have to tell me like, this is an emotional decision and not a business decision. Cause people are like, why are you paying off your mortgage? If you're you know, our interest rate on a 15 year fixed was only like 3.15, but I don't care you guys. Like I'm flat out, like I do not want that mortgage like on my mind. And I just think that would be so incredible just to live your life, just paying the general bills and not have that mortgage. But that's just me. And that's what I'm saying. Like we, as a marriage, I don't think that any set of like budgets and finances is across the board right for everybody. I think you have to learn about it and go on Pinterest and research it and I'll share as much as I can and I just think the more that you fill your heart with the information, the more you'll realize like this is what feels right to me. And that's what we've done, right? Like we've taken a lot of Dave Ramsey stuff. I read a lot of business books and finance books. I love my monthly money magazine. And at the end of the day, I have decided like, or we have decided this is what makes us feel most accomplished. So even though a lot of business people will tell you it's not the smart decision for us to pay off the mortgage for us, that's what we want right now. Like we want the freedom and stability and flexibility of not having that. Like, I don't want to say hanging over us, but I kind of feel like it's a little black cloud. Mm. So yeah, that's what we've, that's our big goal right now. I mean, if you look on my last year's, which I'm going to totally share how we're going to do this. So this is like my last year's big time uh, mm, goals and visions. And you can see right there, it says no mortgage. So it was number nine of 10. Actually, no, it was my biggest one. It was my big lofty goal. So no mortgage if we were able to pay off the mortgage this year, which we weren't. But you know what? We certainly rocked it paying double, triple or quadruple. So Okay, so what's else? So the other thing I want you guys to know is that like fundamentally, we just don't know where we are with college savings. And I know this sounds crazy and so many people look at me. I mean, we might open up like a 529 when the mortgage is paid off, but we just like, I just don't, I don't know. I don't know. Like I think there was so much power in the fact that I had to make the decision to go to a state school relatively for free or go to the small division one um, private school that I went to to play soccer. But I knew I would come out with like 25 or 30,000 because it only paid so much of my education, uh, the soccer program. So, and that was like over a hundred thousand dollar education. So I did pretty good, like as far as scholarships and everything. But you know, at the end of the day, I just think it's really incredible when 
children have to make a choice. Like, I love the idea of giving our children a lump sum and saying, like, whatever it ends up being later on down the road, here's 75000 for four years. You can either choose to go to that Ivy League and that will cover one of your four years and you will be super in debt. Like, I would die if any of our children decided to have um, financial loan debt of hundreds of thousands like because that's just something that we just don't want for them and I know a lot of people have it and if you have it like I cannot believe just some of the systems that we learned from like Dave Dave Ramsey's total money makeover and financial peace university and my hi Melissa my good friend Melissa Ganey King just said she agrees with me about college funding for kids that they should be invested and I do too and and I just think that they that decision is so huge and I am not going to say I'm going to pay for college no matter what you do like that will not happen in our family it doesn't matter if we have 50 million dollars in the bank it's not going to happen so I just think that they need to be invested in their future and they need to know like that they might have to work hard you know we'll do this for a car we'll do this for a lot of options so I just wanted to say that's where we are with college savings because a lot of people say to me did you do a 529 where are you with college savings I'm like we're not doing anything until we're we are taken care of like I don't want to be something that my kids have to worry about like I want them to know mom and dad paid off the mortgage mom and dad have tons of retirement lined up and now mom and dad can focus on helping us with college like it doesn't even matter if Nash is 15 and by then we have our nest egg of like millions and then we can say okay buddy so now we're going to funnel all this into retirement, right? I mean, into college savings. So that's just where we are. Like, we fundamentally believe in, like, taking care of us and making sure that, like, our ducks are in a row and then doing college savings. But that's that's what I'm saying. Like, some people, like, want to pay off their mortgage, pay off their debt, fund college and fund retirement all at the same time. And I am like, that is your, like, go for it. Go for it. Like, because everybody, it's so interesting, like, how emotionally, how, em like, we are all different parents, and that needs to be celebrated. We are all different savers and spenders, and we have emotion involved in, like, some people's experience with their college debt or no debt is something that forms their opinion for their children. So I just think I'm always, I'm just being open and honest about what works for us and passing no judgment on anyone else. Um... Okay, so how did we get, how did I go from like crazy shopaholic lady, like loving fashion, always wearing a new outfit, like every time uh, we went out on a date, crazy, to like a minimalist and really being super picky about my wardrobe and actually not really loving to go shopping. So let me tell you a couple things. I can't believe I didn't write the name down because now it's slipping me, but I will put it in the comments of this. Like I watch, I've watched documentaries about fast fashion and I just don't know how I truthfully feel about the fabrics and the um, creation of the whole fast fashion environment. I really try to buy our kids clothes used um, or support local. My good girlfriend Vanessa Hines owns Cast Baby here in Vero, so I love supporting her shop because that's that's our friend, like one of my good girlfriends. And I love doing swaps. Um, I love doing hand me downs. And I was at a, a gathering just a few nights ago, and we were all agreeing, like let's do a clothes swap. So I'm gonna follow up with that. There was like eight of us there. We're all the same size, and you better believe I'm gonna have them all over for wine and dessert some night in January, and we're gonna swap some clothes. Like we have so many options and so much stuff now, you guys. Like I just cannot believe the sheer amount of stuff that ugh, I don't even know if it's like Americans or just people in general right now have. So. Through my research of fabrics and the toxins that can be present in them, I just decided that I was going to slow down. Like, I did a lot of research on um, just fair trade. I don't know. Sometimes it's like innocence is bliss, but you know, there's a lot of children's clothes manufacturers whose manufacturing practices don't align with me. Like, I don't like the idea of a little kid, like in if, Cambodia, like making clothes. For our child like that just is something that I really don't align with um, one of the companies that we love to order from 
and I love when they have sales because they have a wonderful organic cotton certification is Hannah Anderson. We order most of our jammies from them and to me, the proof is in the pudding. I bought a used pair of Hannah Anderson like pants. They're sort of like legging-ish for our son Nash when he was little, like one and a half. And now Kit is wearing them. And those pants have been crawled all over every kind of asphalt, concrete, you name it. And they are still wonderful. And that's what they say. Like we make pieces to pass down from child to child. And they're big on one piece, multiple hand-me-downs. And I'm just here to tell you it's true. So when you look at their leggings and you think, oh my God, leggings for like 15 or $20, I can get them you name a place for five dollars like for us we've just chosen to either buy used clothing for our children or support Hanny anderson or support a local store so that's one of the ways that just in general and the other thing like as far as budget and finances we don't shop a lot with our children when we do shop we're very clear on this is a shopping trip or looking trip and that has been amazing because when it's a looking trip, if they have good behavior during the course of whatever we're there to buy as parents, then at the end we can set a timer for five minutes of looking. If they do not mind and um, when we say, okay, it's time to go, and if they don't say okay and go, or if they complain, the next time they will not earn the option to look. So it you only have to take that option away once and they realize right away, like mom or dad mean business. So we talk a lot about looking trips and shopping trips and that helps. They make their own money but based on whatever chores they do. Dave Ramsey also has a wonderful, wonderful program where he has banks that are like separated into three quadrants and it's sin, spend, save, and give. So they both have their little like banks where they can, you know, when they earn their money based on what they get done as far as chores and they can get extra stars for behavior. So if we catch them doing something that is above and beyond just being kind, caring, sharing. Remember when I talked about our mantras in a previous episode? So when we catch them doing something like that, we'll put an extra star on their chart and that's just an extra quarter. But it does add up. If they have four of those in a week, that's an extra dollar. So right now, if they get no penalties, um, they earn $6 a week. And I know that sounds like a lot, but we have a lot of expectations on them, like setting the table, helping clear out the dishwasher, putting on napkins, putting their clothes in the dirty clothes, getting themselves dressed, like keeping things tidy, putting things away. Like there's a lot of things that they do. And one of our sayings is everybody has to help in a big family. So, and the thing that I think is most important about kids with finances and budget is that you have to be consistent. So just make sure whatever you choose to do, be consistent. And I can actually, if you guys want to, um, shout, shout out chore chart below if you have interest in me sharing their chore chart and what it looks like and how we implement it and sharing their banks. So if you guys shout out like chore chart or banks or whatever below, then I'll know that there's an interest for that and I can share that in a future episode. So... And the other thing I think that I do personally and that Walt does now a lot more is when we are purchasing something, we make sure that we really think about the object. Like, do I need this? Was something broken in order for me to have this need? Will this make our life more efficient? Will this make our life more organized? Like, we really think about the needs and efficiency and organize and functionality. Like, to me, I will buy a massive, like, shoe bench for, like, $250. Like, I love our shoe bench. It's this huge bench, and it has a slow closed lid. And I remember buying it and thinking, I can't believe I'm spending $250 but I was like I get to hide everybody's shoes in there we never see shoes kids can easily open it throw their shoes in and shut it and it's just been such a blessing and has taken the clutter of shoes like boop out of everywhere so I will spend extra money on on like storage that hides because I just I don't love clutter and I just like things to be neat and tidy but things are not neat and tidy in our house like I'm not OCD like people come to our house all the time and and I think that they like think it's amazing because they realize how casual and livable and kid friendly it is okay so when I think about something I really want to hone in on like why do I want this object like where 
why do I need this? And that's what I've done even on Amazon. I never, ever, ever, unless I have a list of things that I need to buy on Amazon, I fill my cart and I step away. And then I come back later. Maybe I take a little bit of time on Pinterest before I look at that card again and I read through like some of my minimalism like pins or just like my emotional pins, right? Because I always want to make sure that I'm purchasing from a place of need and not like an insane want. If that, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's just helped me realize like maybe if there's like an emotional connection to why I'm purchasing something and maybe we don't really need it. And then again, like I know I mentioned Pinterest, but there's so many wonderful like minimalist documentaries and things about just the fashion industry and documentaries on what that looks like. And, you know, we just aren't ones to just go to Target. Like we just don't really go and browse at Target. And I know that a bunch of you guys are like, what? How do you not just go to Target? Because to me, I would rather like be outside playing with the kids or be running at a park or be reading a book or doing Legos here at the house. And I know that Target is an experience for a lot of families, but for us, like for like more of like a minimalist mindset in like not supporting like the continual purchase of materials, we have chosen that Target happens with the kids, I would say once every six months. Like, I don't know, you guys, it just doesn't happen a lot. So, but it's really good, right? I don't know, it's really good for us. Like we don't have to, it, it just, okay, it's good for us. And what works for us doesn't work for everybody, but this is my platform for sharing what does work for us. So the other thing I love is just reminding myself, okay, like here's my best way of saying it. I could be at Target right now and see a necklace like this that was maybe like an organic like leaf and and something similar and I would love it, right? And I would think, oh, that would look so beautiful and I love it so much. But when I hold something up, I always try to think, do I have something like this? And is this something that is going to like fulfill, like will I be able to give away what I have at home that's most similar? Like if I buy a black sweater, I will go into my closet and then donate or give to a friend my old black sweater. So I love the idea of like one in, one out. So when you hold like up a new pair of earrings, think like do I have another pair of earrings that I can give to a friend? Does that make sense? Because sometimes when you think, I can't even think of a pair that I wanna give away, then you don't really need a pair, right? If you can't like actively think about what you can purchase Purge, then maybe you don't really need that item. So for us with budgets and finances, this is what has really helped. As far as grocery shopping goes, I just have to be completely open and honest that when I started Jamberry and it started doing better, I actually said to Walt, the only thing I ever want from Jamberry, like the only thing I want from this business is I don't want a grocery budget. And that's what I said. And I said, I want you to hear my heart. I don't want a grocery budget. Like, I don't ever want to have to go to the store and not buy organic because we can't afford it. I don't want to ever go to the store and not buy, like, green juices because they're convenient for me. And so, I don't know, you guys. Like, that's our splurge. Like, that's where we get super not budget friendly but we to that that's what i'm saying like we we know our grocery budget but it is so ridiculous compared to um other americans grocery budget but we lived on a budget the whole time we were plowing through like our debt the whole time i was building this business like we were on a tight grocery budget and a tight eating out budget and that looked like I think we had like 600 for groceries and 200 for eating out and that was it. Like we could not eat more food than $800 in a month when we were um, on a super strict budget and I was a stay at home mom and Walt was working. And I remember he would say, um, do you want to go out to eat? And I was like, uh, no, we don't have money to go out to eat. And he would be like, what? I work way too freaking hard for us not to have money to go out to eat. And I was like, it's not in the budget. Like we just don't have it, babe. And he's like, uh, so that was tough, right? Because I felt like I was holding our money, but we had decided and he was wonderful, but he was just like, 
man, we blew through that really fast. So I do understand how hard being budget conscious couple is because we were there for so many years, but we're still there. But all I'm saying is the one area where I do not, either of us, neither of us like put like hard limits is on the food we eat. Because to me, like I shared in my smoothie recipe video, like food is fuel for me. And if I do not have the correct fuel, I can not only not be like an awesome wife, a great mom, I cannot work. Like I need good quality whole foods, like plant-based, lots of fruits and vegetables. Like we never have a refrigerator that doesn't have fresh fruits and vegetables. Like that is, it just doesn't happen. So between us, you guys, yes, we used to have a grocery budget and it was really hard. And I remember trying to make ends meet there at the end before the new budget rolled over for the next month. And I remember making crazy combos and I remember having bare fridges because we couldn't afford real fruits and vegetables. And that just saddens me because I think, gosh, if we were in that predicament and Walt made an amazing income, I can't imagine what people do who don't have that much. I mean, I, I know what they do. They order, you know, it's processed food and things that they can afford. So now it's like no holds barred. Like we go crazy town on some groceries. So, but that's been a huge blessing on our health and the health of our children and their healthy eating habits. So that's where we just don't even have a budget. I'm trying to think if we have any other restrictions in place for our budget and finances. Um, we have marriage meetings, which I need to write down as a idea for another live video. I'll probably pull Walt in on that one. But in our marriage meetings, we try to have them once a week and we always do a budget check. And Walt knows he's the one right now that pays all our bills and juggles all that and moves money around and everything. So he's our head like checkbook budgeter and everything. And then um, I keep a uh, tally of my own business finances. So I do the business, he does the personal. And um, so yeah, in marriage meetings, we just talk about, okay, so that I need you to move this much money over for my business because I'm doing blah, 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 blah. Like, you know, this, you know, a few weeks ago, it was buying Christmas presents and sending Christmas cards out to hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people. So we had to pull, you know, money out for that and make sure that it was in my business account for me to order and do all of that. So we're always just making sure that we're having a conversation. Like, where are we with this? And I'll just say to him, okay, so give me an update on all of our accounts. And he'll just be like, here's where our mortgage is at. Here's where our retirement's at. Here's where this, 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 and that. So that's been really helpful. And although they're really boring, it's been awesome for us to make sure we're on the same page. And I'm always, we're always kind of re-meeting in the middle. Like, we had this like wild brained idea that we were just going to go to Australia next summer and not even care about our mortgage. And honestly, like a couple weeks later, like Walt came back to me and he's like, how are you feeling about what we decided? And I was like, scared. And he's like, okay, me too. So we were both like, nope, that will be our celebration when we pay off the mortgage. Like we've always said for years, when the mortgage is paid off, the Cullens are going to California, Hawaii, Australia, New Zealand. Like that is what we're doing. It is not going to be a short trip. It is not just going to be a couple weeks. It'll probably be months and it will be amazing. So there I just said it out loud, but I just think when you as a couple can align your dreams and your goals and your financial mission, I think it just makes it that much more relevant in your life and it gives you that much more like ammo. But I'm going to cut it off there. Know that we're going to cover this in my vision webinar that I'm launching soon. That's totally going to be free and going to rock your world. And you guys get to take time to figure out what your financial goals are, what your personal goals are, and what your business goals are. So we're going to power through that together and it's going to be awesome. Okay, you guys, happy Friday or Saturday morning for some of you. Happy weekend. Bye.